Hello, and welcome to this presentation recording. The topic of this presentation, Ethernet IP Overview, is part of the benefits of Ethernet IP seminar series, which is presented by Rockwell Automation and members of our partner network. The benefits of Ethernet IP seminar series provides education on technology, architectures, design considerations, and best practices to help our customers design and deploy a robust, secure, and future-ready Ethernet IP network infrastructure. This topic, Ethernet IP Overview, is ideal for those who are new to the topics of industrial Ethernet or industrial networking in general. My name is Gregory Wilcox. I am the Reference Architectures Development Manager for Rock Automation and a member of the Rock Automation Alliance teams to both Cisco Systems and Panduit. Before I get started, just a few words on some logistics. Many slides within this presentation contain additional comments with note pages on that slide. A good example of notes would be definitions of any acronyms or standards referenced on that slide, or just additional context to explain the intent of the slide. In addition to the notes, there are hyperlinks to additional content embedded throughout the slide deck, as well as additional slides at the end of the slide deck with references to additional information. During this presentation, I will introduce the benefits of Ethan IP seminar series and position Ethan IP both commercially and technically as the single industrial network technology. So let's get started. Part of the Ethan IP seminar series, again, will educate customers on the technology, architectures, design guidance, and recommendations. We'll cover the design recommendations developed by Rock Automation and our collaboration of partners to help customers with their network infrastructure convergence, both plant-wide as well as site-wide network infrastructures. We'll cover what Ethan IP is, its capabilities, advantages, and how it enables network technology convergence. We'll also cover how this helps ensure customers protect their network investments and make sure they are both future-ready as well as sustainable again, both from a plant-wide as well as site-wide network infrastructure architecture. We'll cover how Ethan IP, which is standard and established multidiscipline control and information platform, supports lean initiatives through better asset utilization through common network infrastructures. We'll also cover how this single industrial network technology utilizing standard Ethernet and TCP IP protocol suite enables seamless plant-wide information sharing for customers to obtain timely access to key performance indicators as well as improve overall responsiveness. This is the core principles of the benefits of Ethan IP seminar series. This is a sampling of the current uh, presentation recorded topics. This session for right now, Ethan IP overview, but also the follow-up to this is the fundamentals of Ethan IP network technology. This mainly focuses on the network technology of Ethan IP. Also, the designing the physical layer of Ethan IP, headed up by Panduit and supported by Rockwell Automation. Testing the physical layer for Ethan IP. Both of these are important for robust network infrastructures. This is headed up by Fluke Network, supported by Rockwell Automation. But also network technology convergence, covering the best practices developed by Cisco and Rockwell Automation. Design considerations for real-time Ethan IP performance, both from a plant-wide and site-wide network infrastructure perspective as well as network resiliency and redundant path topologies for Ethan IP, fundamentals of securing Ethan IP networks, as well as scalable, secure, remote access solutions. More to come in the future. For this particular topic, I'll start off with covering industrial network trends. What's going on today? I'll briefly cover the network technology convergence and talk about the collaboration of partners. Again, position Ethan IP as the single industrial network technology for this multidiscipline control and information platform. And what does that mean? Cover the OSI reference model and how Ethan IP applies to it as far as standards, as well as cover network architecture examples for both plant wide and site wide, and then finish up by referencing additional information for your reference. So, in regards to industrial network trends, a trend which has actually been happening for a long time, so it's more of a continuous trend than a new trend, is really customers are looking for a broad availability of products to meet their applications from a broad availability of vendors to meet their application requirements for their industrial automation and control systems. But they're also looking for network standards. They need to have coexistence of different technologies, multidiscipline control and information on a common network infrastructure, but also for interoperability 
interoperability of those devices um, for a complete seamless plant-wide information system. But they're also looking for a convergence of network technologies. They don't want to have many disparate technologies which they have to support from an infrastructure and asset utilization perspective. They want to remove these and have a common, seamless information sharing plant-wide architecture. They want common network design tools, deployment, troubleshooting across the entire architecture. They want to avoid having special tools. This takes time, efforts, and training, special dedicated assets. Through these common infrastructures, they want to be able to support lean initiatives and overall better asset utilization, not only from the individual components, but also from the human assets themselves. The training, the skill sets, the experience of these human assets to use common tools on a common infrastructure, whether it's an industrial automation application or an information technology application. They also want their networks to be future ready. They want to maximize their investments. When an industrial automation and control system goes in, that control system can be there 10, 20, 30. One customer told me their control system gets put in, it's put in there for infinity. It's there for a very long time. Customers cannot afford to continually turn over their applications. They need to make sure their network is future ready. Future ready defined as be able to expand it while maintaining existing performance. Be able to expand and take care, advantage of new products and new technology without having to do an overall forklift upgrade. And most of all, customers want to be able to reduce their risk, simplify their design when it comes to deploying industrial network technology. Applications are converging in the industrial space. In the past, customers would have many disparate production and control systems for their applications. Customers have been converging these to a common control and information platform. Rock Automation refers to this as the integrated architecture. Applications such as information data collection, I.O. and drive control, safety applications, process and power control, high availability and redundancy for control applications, as well as energy management. Customers are looking to converge these into a common controlled information platform or a multidiscipline industrial network convergence. Another way of looking at this is the traditional approach for controllers. In the past, if you had a controller, it supported many disparate network technologies. You may have a plant network, an IO network, a safety network, or maybe even a drive network. All these have costs, assets to manage and maintain. The transition is to a single industrial network technology, converging all these different applications onto a single industrial network technology with a common network infrastructure for both industrial and non-industrial traffic. But in addition to the convergence, also the job functions. So everything from the multidisciplines, discrete process and safety and motion applications, but also from field devices to plant-wide technologies but also in the job functions themselves. A good example, a control system engineer, whether it's for a system integrator, a machine builder, or a plant end user, they want to make sure their application is future ready with high throughput. They want to make sure it's established through the use of established, widely accepted network technology supported by leading industry vendors. But also from an IT network engineer, again, the convergence of information technology with industrial automation technology, they want to use a standard Ethernet and TCP IP protocol suite and use of common network infrastructure assets and tools for design, deployment, and troubleshooting. But also from an equipment builder standpoint, they want to ensure that their solution is convergence ready. How we define convergence is, is what does that partner have to do to ensure that their solution is ready to be seamlessly integrated into their customer's plant-wide infrastructure. They want to make sure they use a single multidiscipline control and information platform, that is Ethernet IP and the integrated architecture. But also from a system integrator perspective, they want to enable a seamless plant-wide or site-wide information sharing. They want to be able to converge industrial and non-industrial traffic. And Ethernet IP is being established, again, hundreds of vendors around the world creating products, Millions of nodes as far as installed base, thousands of product lines. Ethan IP is open, standard, established. So there's another, another representation of the multidiscipline industrial network convergence. A single network technology on a common infrastructure. As far as applications, process control. Things like process automation systems like the Rock Automation Plant PAX. Instrumentation 
from our alliance partner, Anderson Hauser or ENH, as well as condition monitoring, but also power control. Things like motor control centers like the Allen Bradley IntelliCenter, overload relays, soft starters, drives, discrete control, such as standard and safety controllers, standard or safety I.O., general motion controller, as well as robotics. Information technology, the convergence of industrial automation technology with information technology. Information technology such as IP telephony for voice over IP phones, IP cameras for streaming of operations or perimeter security, as well as Wi-Fi, for example, IEEE 802.11n. Convergence of different technologies, both industrial and non-industrial, on a common network infrastructure. So this technology converge is not only happening in the plant-wide or site-wide applications, but also in the enterprise space. IT network engineers have been converging voice, video, and data for many years in the enterprise space. They've con been converging many disparate business systems into a common enterprise resource planning systems. So this technology convergence, which is the enabler, is leading to convergence of business systems and plant-wide systems. So although technology is the enabler, it's the business aspects which is driving that, the need for regulatory compliance, key performance indicators, supply chain management, responding to customer needs. So technology enabled is the business aspect which is driving this. But it's not only just the technology and the networks, it's also the cultural and organizational convergence, where you have now different groups in the past which had very little interaction the controls domain and the IT domain now are collaborating together, sharing best practices, all due to the convergence of industrial automation technology as well as information technology. But successful design and uh, deployment of converged plant-wide networks or multidiscipline networks requires collaboration, simplification, as well as innovation. So collaboration between IT network engineers as well as control system engineers, but also their trusted partners. So continuing trend in industrial networking is the convergence of technology, specifically industrial automation technology with information technology. To further enable and support this convergence, Rockwell Automation is collaborating with key members of our partner network, specifically those partners who have a footprint in both industrial automation and information technology space. So this starts with the key technology enabler, Ethan IP. Standard Ethernet and standard TCP IP protocol suite. It is the single industrial network technology and the world's leading industrial Ethernet. As well as Rockwell Automation, a leader in industrial infrastructure through the Rockwell Automation integrated architecture. But also Panduit, a leader in physical layer network infrastructure, both in the information technology space as well as the industrial automation space. Cisco, wireless security, switching and routing, not only in the enterprise space, but also in the industrial automation space. Fluke Networks, network testing, verification, certification tools for the industrial automation space as well as the information technology space. So together we are providing recommendations, design guidance, best practices, and solutions to help customers successfully design and deploy a robust, secure, and future-ready Ethernet IP network infrastructure. This collaboration also helps to enable the cultural and organizational convergence of controls and IT domains, which I talked about a few minutes ago. But also these groups, again, who once had little interaction are now collaborating to share engineering best practices. And the collaboration between Cisco, Panduit, Fluke Networks, and Rock Automation is providing a common set of tool sets for both the information technology space as well as the industrial automation technology space. Networkconvergence.net is a single repository for the collateral in our joint efforts. This is a screen capture of the uh, networkconvergence.net site. So on the left-hand side, you see information on the Cisco and Rock Automation Alliance, the Panduit and Rock Automation Alliance, as well as the collateral done between Cisco, Panduit, and Rock Automation. Information from Flute Networks on net testing and troubleshooting, as well as information from the ODVA. 
To support the convergence of information technology and industrial automation technology, it's important to have a good industrial network design methodology to avoid network sprawl as well as enable convergence ready solutions. So network sprawl is the growth of networks in a undisciplined fashion, where they just keep adding components without understanding the impact to the networks. Next thing you know, you have a network which can no longer meet the performance and is no longer future ready for those applications. So this good network design methodology comes from understanding the application and functional requirements. What type of devices are we connecting? Is it industrial or non-industrial? What are the data requirements for availability, integrity, and confidentiality? Communication patterns, topologies, traffic types. Is it information, control, time synchronization? It's important to understand the application requirements. It's also too important to develop a logical framework or a roadmap. Figure out what type of devices do I need to have and how do I deploy those in different types of zones from a segmentation perspective based on function or geographic dispersion. It's also important to develop a good physical framework that aligns with the logical framework and a good, robust network infrastructure. It's important to uh, take into consideration a defense and death security model. When it comes to physical aspects and security, a lot of times customers treat this as an afterthought. It's important for good network design that the logical, physical, and defense in-depth security approach being considered up front as part of the core design. But also to help mitigate risk, simplify design, and speed deployment, it's important to use standard information technology standards, follow industrial automation technology standards, and to utilize reference models and reference architectures. This is where the collaboration comes in. This is a representation of the Cisco and Rockwa Automation converged plant-wide Ethernet reference architectures, sometimes referred to as CPWE. For more information on CPWE, you may want to view the Network Technology Convergence recorded seminar series. The Converged Plant-Wide Ethernet Architecture is made up of the Rock Automation Integrate Architecture and the Cisco Ethernet to the Factory, but this is the logical framework for smaller modular building blocks for a future-ready network design. This logical framework is complemented and supported by the physical framework from Panduit, Panduit's Unified Physical Infrastructure. Solutions for the cell array zones and control panels for noise mitigation and cable routing, as well as in the level three site operations for industrial data centers, racks, patching, cable management, and so forth. And both the physical framework as well as the logical framework are supported by a common tool sets from Fluke Networks. Certification tools, traffic analyzers, and the plant floor, as well as up into the enterprise. So we work together to come up with this common set of collateral, whether it's seminar series like the one you're re listening to now, white papers, application guides, design and implementation guides, all to come up with recommendation design considerations to help reduce network latency and jitter. Latency is the delay in information. Jitter is the variance of that. It's important to minimize latency and jitter to have real-time performance. But also these recommendations and design considerations to increase the availability integrity and confidentiality of information, but also again criteria to help design, deploy a robust, secure, future-ready network infrastructure. These recommendations are based on a single network technology, Ethan IP, robust physical layer, good strong network segmentation, resiliency protocols with redundant path topologies, time synchronization, data prioritization, Convergence Ready Solutions, Defense and Depth Security, as well as Scalable Secure Mode Access. All of these are topics of the benefits of Ethan IP series recordings. So these partners collaborating, Cisco and Panda, part of our Strategic Alliance Partners, Fluke Networks as far as a Encompass Product Partner, part of the Rock Automation Partner Network, collaborate together to provide collateral design guides, application guides, white papers, to help enable this convergence for both industrial automation technology as well as information technology, all to lead to design, successful design and deployment by our customers for robust, secure, future-ready Ethan IP networks, all because network infrastructure matters. So it starts with the integrated architecture for Rock Automation, first our plant-wide optimization as well as our machine builder performance. Well, this all is supported by Ethan IP. Ethan IP is the network platform for 
the Rock Automation Integrated Architecture. High availability, time synchronization, integrated motion, safety services, enterprise connectivity. The next is basically Pandit with their unified physical infrastructure for a robust physical infrastructure. Pandit has common infrastructure that applies to both industrial automation space, enterprise solutions, as well as the data, solu data center solutions. Again, common infrastructure to support the convergence of industrial automation as well as information technology spaces. And Pandit is a strategic alliance member to Rock Automation. Fluke Networks, again, tools that are applicable to both the information technology space and industrial automation technology space, tools for network certification and troubleshooting, common network infrastructure assets. Again, Fluke Networks is a Encompass product partner. And Cisco, a strategic alliance partner. Again, tools to help this convergence of industrial and automation technology and information technology for plant-wide switching and routing, security and awareness applications, but also things like unified communications for mobility and collaboration, both voice, video, and data. But also things like unified computing systems for virtualized servers, switches, and firewalls. So Ethan IP itself, the IP stands for Industrial Protocol. Ethan IP is managed by the ODVA, which is a organization of equal partners. It's supported by leading vendors such as Cisco Systems, Anderson Hauser, and Rock Automation. But this is where I'd like to talk about the context of lingo. Similar sounding terms have different meanings based on the context of how they're used. So a good example, what is the difference between Ethan IP and Ethan IP? Well, the first is Ethernet space IP, a standard Ethernet from IEEE and standard Internet protocol or IP from the Internet Engineering Task Force. This is common terminology in the IT space. The second one is Ethernet IP with the capital N forward slash IP stands for Ethernet Industrial Protocol, which is the focus of this recorded seminar. It's still standard Ethernet. It's still standard IP, but it's important to understand the context of the lingo. In this case here, Ethan IP uses a common application layer protocol called the Control and Information Protocol, or CIP, referred to as SIP. Now, if we were talking about the food and beverage industry and we talked about SIP, it would refer to clean in place. So it's important to understand the context of how the lingo is being used. So again, uh, industrial Ethernet, or Ethan IP, I should say, um, supports multiple IEEE standards. Obviously, 802.3 and 802.1 for standard Ethernet but also things like Precision Time Protocol for Time Synchronization, the IEEE 1588. Again, standard IP from the Internet Engineering Task Force, the Common Industrial Protocol from the ODVA, but also SIP and Ethan IP is a IEC 61158 standard. Because it is standard, not standards-based, it's IT-friendly and it's future-ready, it's sustainable. It's also, again, multidiscipline control and information platform. If you look to the lower right, that's a representation of what they call the SIP bubbles. So a good example, control, information, network management. This be, used to be referred to control, configure, and collect. Been around for many years. But also things like safety, synchronization in motion, energy. This is the capabilities of multidiscipline control and information that SIP, the SIP object in ODVA, brings. Now, SIP itself is actually an example of future ready. When the SIP object came out in the late 80s, the concept of safety and time synchronization energy weren't there. So again, it's future ready, be able to add in new functionality without doing a forklift upgrade. Again, it's very well established. Thousands of products, all kinds of applications, hundreds of vendors, products around the world. This is a small partial list of the vendors that support Ethernet IP through the ODVA, Rock Automation, Fluke Network, Cisco, and Anderson Hauser. Many of these are our partners. Many of these are our competitors. Again, it's organization of equals. Hundreds of vendors creating products for Ethernet IP today. In reality, this is a five-layer TCP IP model. SIP, the Common Industrial Protocol, at the application layers. TCP IP protocol suite at layers three and four, and standard I treat Lee at layers one and two. So what makes Ethan IP industrial? Well, it's hardening of the physical layer. 
commercial off-the-shelf cabling, Cat 5e or Cat 6, will most undoubtedly fail in a harsh industrial ethernet environment. It's important to have the proper industrial ethernet cabling. For more information on that, you may want to refer to the Designing the Physical Layer for Ethernet IP recorded seminar as part of the seminar series. But also, it's the infrastructure devices, hardening those. The switches, the routers, the security appliances, making sure they have the same environmental specifications as the industrial controllers. Heat, vibration, shock, humidity, contaminants. But also you have to have a common application layer protocol. TCP IP enables coexistence. It's the common application layer protocol, in this case SIP, which also permits interoperability. So because Ethernet IP is standard, multiple application layer protocols can coexist on the same common network infrastructure. So for example, again, SIP, the common industrial protocol, Modbus TCP, IEC 61850, but also web applications with hypertext transfer protocol, video and voice for the real-time transport protocol. All these can coexist on the same network infrastructure, but coexistence does not mean interoperability. So this is where our partner network comes into place. We have multiple encompassed product reference partners that provide gateways that translate between SIP and other protocols or Ethernet IP and other networks. Earlier I talked about how the different layers knew how to communicate amongst themselves. This actually uses a process called encapsulation and decapsulation to allow information to communicate through the OSI stack. So the example I want to use here is basically going online with the control logic controls are on the right top, top right hand side of the slide. Using a development tool called Studio 5000 on a notebook in the top left with our communication driver called RS Links. So if you ever fire up one of our programming tools and tie to our control over, over Ethernet IP, this is the process it goes through. So an Ethernet message itself is really a structure of concatenation of protocols. Ethernet IP actually defines an encapsulation protocol that sets up communications through an application program interface from the application layer to sockets to set up ports within TCP. So in this case here, we actually have the payload, which is the common industrial protocol with the encapsulation protocol. So the payload itself would be things like commands and data. So I go online with the controller. I do programming. I change a tag. I do an upload and download. I'm creating commands and data. This payload gets encapsulated into a TCP segment. This TCP segment gets encapsulated into a IP packet. This IP packet gets encapsulated into an Ethernet frame. Although we configure IP address in our devices, once it hits the wire or the air, we're actually communicating through the actual frame itself. Now ultimately, the frame is sent out to the logical interface into the physical. So it goes out to the PHY. Whether it goes out copper for goes out voltages for copper or light for fiber or RF for wireless applications, different types of physical interfaces. But also the terms frame, packet, segment, and payload are standard industry terms. A uh, good example: Fluke Networks. They may have a layer two frame test, a layer three packet test, a layer four segment test, or maybe a layer seven payload test. In these standard terminology. Because Ethernet IP is standard, uses standard Ethernet, it's actually physical layer independent. So the physical layer, a good example would be like copper or fiber. That's pretty straightforward. So Ethernet IP or SIP is also data link layer independent because it uses standard IP. IP makes this portable across different types of data links. For example, IEEE 802.3, whether it's fiber or copper, but also IEEE 802.11 Wi-Fi. Wherever IP goes, SIP has the capability of going there. Now, there may not be a product to support it today, but the technology supports it. There are customers using SIP or Ethan IP today over satellite communications as well as technologies called Powerline Carrier. Again, Ethan IP, because of its portability, is data link independent. But also because we use utilize standard IP, we support seamless routing or seamless plant-wide information sharing. Now, not all industrial Ethernet protocols are created equal. They all have their unique capabilities and features. Some industrial Ethernet protocols 
don't use standard TCP IP for the network and transport layers. They use their own vendor specific or they don't use them at all. These may present challenges that you need to understand for your application. This may limit their portability and routability, portability across different data links, but also routability. They may require different assets, assets that you have to purchase, assets you have to configure, assets that you have to manage in order to move information from one part of your network to another one. So assets could be things like proxies, data concentrators, and store and forward devices. And the configuration of those assets are actually assets in amongst themselves. How do you maintain that? What kind of data mapping is it? How do you keep track of it? In some industrial Ethernets are Ethernet name only. Actually, at the Layer 2 data link, it's not Ethernet at all. It's some kind of modified vendor-specific version of that. Again, non-standard Ethernet, this may require additional assets to connect this network to a standard Ethernet plant-wide network. Assets you have to purchase, assets you have to manage. SIP itself is actually network independent. SIP is the common application layer protocol or common industrial protocol for multiple networks such as Ethernet IP, ComplNet, ControlNet, as well as DeviceNet. Because of this, it enables seamless bridging through these different networks. And here's some examples of plant-wide architectures. So we start in the top right. In this case here, we have a switch-level topology and a start configuration. In this case here, the Ethernet IP devices are start off the switch itself. Going clockwise, we actually have a device-level topology configured in a ring topology itself. In this case, using two-port embedded switch technology, where we go from each device to another device. Keep going clockwise, we have a device-level linear topology, again, from device to device. This is referred to as a isolated network with single controller by the ODVA. Examples could be things like equipment builder solutions from both a machine builder as well as a process kit builder. Moving up, this moves into a isolated network with multiple controllers. Again, this is ODVA terminology, where I still have these same topologies, the star, the ring, as well as the linear, a mixture of both switch level and device level topologies, but now these are tied into a higher level switch to show another example of a switch level topology. In this case here, a layer three switch aggregating the different layer two topologies. Examples would be integrated equipment builder machines, a single salary zone, multiple machines, lines, and skids. Moving up, this is a representation of a connected and integrated control system, again, terminology from the ODVA, where we have multiple topologies. In the middle, we actually have a switch level ring topology of switches. Off of those switches, we have multiple topologies, both the ring or switch level topologies as well as device level topologies. On the right hand side, a example of a device level ring topology through a SIP bridge connection. On the left, a device level ring topology connected directly into the switch level ring. Off of that same switch, a linear device level topology, as well as a mixture of industrial as well as non-industrial traffic, shown an example here for the cameras. This is an example how Ethan IP is topology and media independent. Flexibility and choice. A lot of choice for your application needs. Again, moving up to a greater architecture, in this case here, a plant-wide or site-wide operations. Uh, in the case level three site operations, again, an example on the right is a ring topology, a device level ring topology. Example on the left is a device level linear topology. And the example in the middle, the cell area zone number two, Okay, it's, it's a hybrid where I actually have a, a bunch of devices, Ethernet IP devices, um, start off a industrial Ethernet switch, but also connected into a device level linear implementation. But all the industrial Ethernet switches are tied via a redundant start topology, okay, back up into a higher layer switch. So in addition to local or network topologies, Ethernet IP, because it supports or is based on internet protocol, support a broader geographic of application, in this case here, wide area networks. Examples of being point-to-point -point links like a public switch telephone network, circuit switching like integrated circuit uh, digital networks, packet switching like frame relays, where I can actually have a plant site on the right communicating out to a remote site on the left through either internet, wide area network, or public switch telephone networks in a wide area network applications. 
So here's another example of that earlier architecture I showed. In this case here, showing a site-to-site -site connection from our plant with Ethan IP through these unified threat management devices. Okay, out to my remote cellular zone one on the left-hand side. So Unified Threat Management Device, or UTM, is a security appliance, provides for industrial routing capabilities, industrial firewall, virtual private networks, intrusion protections, again, required for a good site-to-site -site connection. So Ethan IP Advantage Summary. Again, Ethan IP is a single industrial network technology for multidiscipline network convergence. Applications such as discrete, process, drive control, safety, motion, power, time synchronization, as well as energy management. Ethan IP is well established. Hundreds of vendors creating thousands of products for multiple applications. There's over 5 million nodes of Ethan IP installed around the world. Because it's established, Ethan IP is, helps reduce the overall risk of deployment. There is a broad availability of products, applications, as well as vendor support. Ethan IP is Supported by the ODVA, an organization of equals. But there are principal members to support this. Good example is Cisco Systems, Anderson Hauser, as well as Rock Automation. Ethan IP is standard, not standards based. It is standard IEEE Ethernet, as well as IETF TCP IP protocol suite. Because it's standard, it enables the convergence of industrial automation technology as well as information technology. Good examples would be voice, video, and data. But this also permits for the utilization of common tool sets, again, assets, for the purpose of design, deployment, and troubleshooting of these networks. But it's not only just the common tool sets that convergence supports, it's also the human assets, the people with their skills, their training, their knowledge base, their experience, to be able to troubleshoot with common tool sets, not only an industrial automation application, but an information technology application. Because it's standard, it's future ready, it increases the sustainability and minimizes risk of deployment. And again, it supports a common network infrastructure, which provides for better asset utilization. As I reviewed earlier, is that Ethan IP is both topology and media independent, so you have flexibility and choice. Whether it's a device level topology, a switch level topology, different media, whether it's copper, fiber, or wireless, or a combination of all of these. Ethan IP is portable and routable go across different types of data links, but enables for plant-wide and site-wide information sharing. There's no data mapping. Because I don't have to data map, we support um, seamless plant-wide information sharing. It simplifies my design, speeds my deployment, and reduces my overall risk. So to wrap up this presentation record, I just want to list out some additional material that would be of good reference for you. One of which is RS Tech in itself, a premier event for Rock Automation. And there is a wide range of network sessions for RS Tech Ed. Again, rstechhead.com. But also the ODVA has a wealth of information. So a lot of the content I covered here is covered in the ODVA document, Network Infrastructure for Ethan IP introduction and considerations, and here are the hyperlinks, but also the SIP advantage, again, the common industrial protocol. From Rocco Automation, a wealth of information, uh, the ones highlighted in red here, the top 10 recommendations for plant-wide Ethan IP deployments, as well as Ethernet design considerations reference manual. Additional information from Fluke Networks, again, for testing and troubleshooting guides. For both local area networks, wide area networks, copper, fiber, as well as wireless deployments. Panda with their unified physical infrastructure, again, for robust infrastructure applications. They have a complete physical layer design implementation guide. But also a joint document between Cisco, Panda, and Rocco Automation and fiber optic infrastructure application guide and deployment. Additional webinar series, Rock Automation and Cisco host a uh, education series webcast, again, both for IT professionals as well as um, industrial automation professionals. A couple highlights were the what every IT professional should know about plant floor networking, as well as what every plant floor engineer should know about working with IT. And we encourage both the industrial automation personnel and the information technology personnel to actually watch these together. And here's the link for those. Some additional information between the Cisco and Rockwell Automation collaboration, the Reference Architectures website, the Converged Plant-Wide Ethernet Reference Architectures itself, the application guide I referenced a few minutes ago, the education series I just referenced, but also the white papers, things like securing manufacturing, computing, and controller assets, achieving secure remote access to the plant floor. 
All this information can be found on networkconvergence.net. It's a single repository for all of our collateral to help you design and deploy a robust, secure, future-ready Ethan IP network. On behalf of Rockwell Automation and myself, thank you for viewing this Ethan IP Overview presentation recording, which is part of the benefits of Ethan IP seminar series presented by Rockwell Automation and members of our partner network. This concludes this recording.